Hello and welcome, as today we're discussing some official Polish documents with Eva Hussein, Polaron's director and founder. Eva, what can you tell us about the Polish citizenship certificate on screen? Thank you, Stephanie. Um, the reason we wanted to showcase a couple of these documents today is that we often talk, talk about them. Um, and they the ultimate aim for when people sign up with us um, to get their citizenship. But I thought, let's show you what it actually looks like. So we're going to be covering what a Polish citizenship certificate looks like and also a birth certificate. And then later on, we'll move on to other documents. Just to explain what these documents contain, uh, who issues them, and uh, what are the features of each one of them. Stephanie, what you are seeing on the screen is a citizenship certificate, so a very coveted document. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes months, if not years, to get it. Um, and I'm going to take you through um, line by line what it actually says. Okay. So the first thing I'll tell you is that um, this document is uh, issued by the Mazovian Voivodeship Office, and that's the um, the logo, I guess, um, and it's issued by the Polish government. Below that, you can see the case number of this particular application. So it's sequential, and it also has a year of which the application was filed. Um, it's got a date of issue, and this word, um, decisia, simply means decision. It is also stamped by the office of the Viva office. And over here, you can see that it's got a little number two. So this stamps um, um, uh, essentially issued to people in authority. So when, when uh, the stamp appears on your um, citizenship certificate, it's a, a assigned to a person. So in this case, it's a manager or a senior case officer. You can see the signature at the very bottom. And they take personal responsibility for that decision. So. If, um, let's say, it was incorrect, um, they could be, um, you know, um, sued, essentially, mm -hmm. um, personally. So even though they, they work for, for an office, they hold personal responsibility for, for the decision. That is why they're so particular about, um, um, you know, ensuring that the processing is correct in line of the legislation. Okay. Yeah. The next thing, so bef bef below the uh, word, the, the tizia, you see the law under which um, this particular decision was issued um, because Poland since 1920 has had several amendments to the citizenship law and they essentially look at um, who um, they essentially look at how that particular law applies to a person mm -hmm. um, so they quote the law as it relates to this particular uh, citizenship certificate and um, so it's decision, the laws, and then I confirm that Mr. And we, for obvious reasons, we blocked out the name, son of, so the parents' names are listed, born on a particular date in a particular place, has Polish citizenship from birth. So this is really important. So this, this person was born Polish, and therefore they, the decision is to confirm that fact, confirm um, citizenship um, of the person based on blood or ancestry, however you want to put it. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, KPA here, that's the Code of uh, Administrative Procedure, which is the law that applies to these cases. So, you know, often people might say, well, do I need a lawyer um, to uh, help me with my citizenship application? Well, you don't, because it's not a legal procedure. We don't argue anything before any courts. It is just documentation that we file with the Voiva Chip Office, as you're seeing on the screen. And they use the uh, administrative code to process your case. So um, it's not a legal um, process as people might um, you know, imagine it to be. The next section, all of this um, is, um, is guidance on what to do uh, to appeal uh, if your decision is negative, which we um, you know, don't get any of because we guarantee the outcome of the application. So it's um, very, very rarely the decision is negative and then we appeal. Yeah. Um, but you do have 14 days to appeal that decision to the Ministry of Interior and Administration. Um, however, it does say here on this particular document that because the, the decision is, um, the outcome is positive, in other words, this person is a Polish citizen, uh, they waive um, kind of the right to appeal it because there's nothing to appeal, if that makes sense. Yes. 
Um, so, um, and then um, they list who um, a copy of this decision goes to, so obviously to the applicant and, and also to our office because we were representing this person in this particular procedure. Um, so Stephanie, as you, you can see, the, the main thing on this certificate is that the Polish government have say, has said that somebody's Polish from birth, uh, but that's what it looks like. And um, this then enables you to um, apply for a Polish passport. A step number one, the second document you need for applying for a Polish passport is your birth certificate. And there are different types uh, of birth certificates in Poland, so I'm going to take everyone through what they look like and what they looked like in the past. Mm -hmm. So currently, um, as you can see, there's like a white and red uh, document, that's what a Polish birth certificate looks like. And this is a full certificate, so um, essentially when somebody's born, um, in Poland, um, there is a procedure of registering their birth. But if somebody is born outside of Poland, we do what's called a transcription. In other words, we get your birth certificate, we translate it into Polish, and the civil registry office, which is the uh, proper authority to carry that out, transcribes the details from your American, Australian, New Zealand birth certificate into the Polish form. So this is what you are seeing here on the screen. Um, it's a foreign uh, birth certificate that has been recreated in Poland based on the information that's contained um, in your birth certificate from wherever you were born. The interesting uh, thing about all of that is that we need to submit um, the original document as original, as in uh, either an official duplicate or the very first birth certificate that you uh, were given. And that doesn't get returned to you. So Poland keeps that. And often we are required to put apostilles or, or make sure that the document's authentic. Um, and some of the challenges that we encounter along that journey is, for example, where the birth certificate, uh, the source document doesn't contain certain uh, information that's required for Poland because um, they just input that information from one um, form to another. And if there's something missing then they can't press you know, finalize this. Um, so sometimes we have to provide extra information. But what does it have? So, um, you know, obviously uh, the Polish Republic, you know, um, a unique number that you are given and it's mm -hmm. got uh, watermarks, um, you know, a couple of symbols here and there. And then, um, you know, the, the details of the child. In this particular case, this is a woman and she was born in, in Australia. So, um, her names are listed as, as per the birth certificate. Then we have the details of her parents. Um, so father and mother, we block them out for obvious reasons. Uh, and then other information, which in this particular case is left blank uh, because they don't apply. Uh, and number six is the name of the person that registered this particular document. So now I'm going to, so again, this is the full extract of a birth certificate. So it contains yeah. all the information that, um, uh, uh, you know, needed for that. And there's a second page um, here at number eight, you can see uh, this means uh, notes or special notes. And this just explains that the Polish government or the civil registry office, and you can see the stamp and the signature of the manager has used um, a foreign document to create this. So um, they quote the laws which they used to be able to do so. Uh, and the name of the person appears here, which we blocked out. Mm -hmm. um, and then your birth certificate is registered in Poland and it can be used along with your citizenship certificate to apply for a passport. Okay. Uh, and and you, right. mentioned, you mentioned apostles as well. For anyone watching, what is an apostle? So it's an authentication, authentication of a document that's issued by um, uh, another authority. So if you can imagine... Um, People from all over the world apply to have their birth certificates registered in Poland and the Polish government doesn't always know if a document is authentic. Um, so, you know, most birth certificate issues issued in many countries have watermarks and you, you can tell that it's, it's not a photocopy. Uh, but at times uh, the Polish government might not be sure or, uh, you know, like we, we encounter that particularly in America where there's 50 states and each state's got a slightly different way of issuing these documents. And sometimes they just don't look authentic. 
Mm -hmm. um, so the Polish government might come back to us and say, look, get us an apostille. Um, and it's a way of one government talking to another to say, um, you know, this is a, um, an authentic document. Mm -hmm. And it's done under the Hague Convention for um, Simplified Certification of Documents for foreign use for, you know, across different jurisdictions. Yeah. Not all the countries are signatories to it. For example, Canada isn't. So in a place like Canada, you need to also go through the local consulate and um, do what we call authentication. Um, again, the process of that is to prove that our document's authentic. Um, so I hope that's clear. And here on the screen, you okay. see um, a summary uh, birth certificate. So it contains, you know, it's for the same person that I showed you before, but it's yeah. a one pager. And it's just got fewer fewer records and you'd use it for different purposes. Um, and most authorities are happy with just a summary uh, extract like this. And um, the, the contents, you know, the same. Um, details of the child, details of the parents um, and how this was created, the unique number, who issued it, stamp, etc. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Great. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is the old format for uh, birth certificates. And as you can see, this one was issued in 2001. So once upon a time, birth certificates came in a sort of green, uh, light green color, as you can see with the Polish national emblem here. Mm -hmm. And again, this one is a summary uh, birth certificate. So birth certificates are registered in your place of birth. Um, in this case, the, the town is called Nijina. But if you want to do a transcription of a foreign birth certificate, uh, you can lodge it via any, any um, civil registry office. But the function is still the same, that they do a transcription and they stamp it and uh, they give you um, your certificate. But the Polish birth certificates no longer look like this. They've um, started issuing them in a different format. Yeah, This is a very old one. I just wanted to quickly show you how they kind of changed over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this particular one is from 1939, so 25th of March 1939, so six months before the war, or not even less, yeah, um, or roughly about six months uh, when Second World War broke out. And in those days, this particular one, even though it says the Polish Republic, um, uh, it is signed by a priest. Um, so in those days, um, um, religious authorities, so be it rabbi or a priest, were in charge of... Um, registering they, they had books basically in a in a parish or in a in a synagogue where the names were written mm -hmm. and um for it to become an official document it had to be registered through the civil channels uh, and all of that changed after the war where everything was you know became civil mm -hmm. so the interesting thing about this particular document is that it says um so it's a parish civil registry office, Roman Catholic okay. parish. Um, so, um, and this this particular document is in Polish and it's got a stamp and, um, you know, like it looks official, mm -hmm. although it was issued by the church. So sometimes we might have questions about is a um, religious document sufficient? It depends on the year and who issued it. And, okay. um, you know, if it was before um, the change of um, legislation in Poland, this is completely acceptable. Uh, this document, um, Stephanie, is an international birth certificate. So because Poland's part of the European Union, um, any country of um, the European Union, um, any member country can issue a birth certificate that's multilingual. So here, I don't know if you can see it that clearly, but um, uh, it is still the same information, date of birth, place of birth, parents' names, etc. cetera. Uh, but over here, you have all these languages that... Um, uh, you know, you can you can kind of read the document looking at what, what it actually says in another language. So there are 27 official languages in the EU and any country can issue, let's say, I don't know, you were born in Germany, they can issue a German document that's also um, um, issued in several other languages, including Polish mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Uh, and you can, uh, you can obtain that um, from the place where your birth certificate was registered. This particular one, Stephanie, is uh, interesting because it's a handwritten document uh, from 1921, and it is in Latin. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes uh, birth certificates in Poland appear in um, languages other than Polish, and that is because mm -hmm. of Poland's history. Um, so um, in this particular case, um, it was issued by the parish in Latin. Uh, and even the names have Latin equivalents here, if you can see. Mm 
Yeah. Um, and in other jurisdictions, they may have been issued in Russian or German or sometimes um, Yiddish. So uh, with very old documents, um, it, um, we need to translate them into, into Polish, obviously. But if you, if you can imagine looking for documents um, of clients' um, ancestors, it's not that easy because sometimes they appear in languages other um, than, um, than Polish. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this was the last slide, I believe. Yes, it was. So thank you everyone for watching and uh, we'll speak to you very soon about another interesting topic like this. Exactly. Thank you very much, Eva. And remember for everyone else to subscribe to our Facebook pages as we upload plenty of information weekly. Okay. Thanks, Eva.